Hey guys, I'm Brad Wilson from Wild at Heart Wilderness, and what I thought we'd do today is start going over blacksmithing. Blacksmithing, or the forging of metal to create tools and weapons, is a very ancient craft. It's mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, and in chapter 54, verse 16, we see it talks of the blacksmith shaping and heating the metal, or excuse me, heating and then shaping the metal to create a cutting tool. So that's very interesting because if you look in some of our previous videos, we actually talk about the cutting tool as our first item in the five C's and how it is our most basic tool in survival. And so it's good for us to look at blacksmithing from a historical point of view and something that we can add to our experimental archaeology. Basically, we as woodsmen, bushcrafters, and self-reliant people when we go out into the wilderness and practice more primitive type skills such as a bow drill fire or blacksmithing we're actually doing what's called experimental archaeology or in other words we're putting ourselves in the place of our ancestors to better understand how they lived and at times how they survived and all of this comes together to help us be more self-reliant so it doesn't take much to get started in blacksmithing and that's what we're going to talk about today uh, talk about how you can set up just a small forge area to work and then talk about some of the most basic tools that you are going to need to get started in blacksmithing. Sorry about the camera guys, my dog's messing with the tripod. Uh, anyway, stay with me guys and we'll get into it. Alright guys, so blacksmithing, just like the gospel, can be very simple in its most basic form, but then also as you begin to understand it more and learn it more, you begin to see and realize that there's a lot more going on there that you didn't see to begin with and that it can become something that is very complex. But just looking at it in its most basic, simplistic form, there are three basic things you need to understand in blacksmithing. Number one, you need heat. And our means by which we get heat is by using our forge. And we'll get into this more in a minute but our forge is going to give us the heat that we need. Number two, obviously we're going to need some type of metal that we're going to shape and create into a tool. And then the third thing that we're going to need is a means by which we're going to shape and form that heated metal. Or to keep it short, you could say manipulation. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the forge. And right now, it looked right now from the looks of it, it looks like I've got a grill, and I, I sort of do. But really, the grill is just the frame that's holding the actual forge. And so, let me take this apart real quick, and I'll show you guys the, the forge that I'm using. All right, guys. So, the grill behind me there is really just a frame to hold the actual forge. This right here, this setup is the actual forge that is going to contain the heat that I need. And what it is essentially is just nothing more than a brake drum with a few pipe fittings attached to it. And so what I did is just go out to this scrap yard, ask them if they had a brake drum, and they took me to an area where they had a pile with hundreds of brake drums. And so, you know, I just got one, I think I can't remember, I think they charged me by weight or something like that, but it really wasn't that expensive. It was less than $20. And then uh, the rest of the pipe fittings, um, I can't remember exactly how much they were either because it was probably a year ago that I bought all this stuff. But um, the whole thing right here, as you see it, was, was less, probably right around $50 or less. And so um, a lot of guys will use galvanized pipe fittings. Uh, but I, I chose to use black pipe fit, black iron pipe fittings because I've heard that galvanized material when it's around high heat can put off some uh, potentially harmful uh, chemicals and so I didn't want to be breathing in something that was harmful to me but uh, I would encourage you to do your own research and, and figure that out for yourself before you you start doing this sort of thing um, but what I did is I I got those pieces I ordered them off the internet and uh, what we have here is is the brake drum 
And then on the bottom here, I hope you guys, I think some coal fell out. I hope you guys can see it well, but I've got a two inch flange and this is black iron as well. And then I've just drilled some holes in here and bolted them securely on the bottom. I've got a, a this is a two inch flange. I don't know if I just said that or not, but this is a uh, two inch by 14 or something like that pipe fitting. Then attached to that is a T, a two inch T adapter. Another two by six pipe fitting coming out to the side. A small coupling. Probably like a two by two or two by three, something like that. And then just a cap, two inch cap to fit on there. And that will catch the ash. And then when I'm ready to dump the ash, I'll just unscrew it and it'll fall out. And then, uh, as you can see on the inside of the brake drum, there's a big opening there. And to prevent the coal from falling straight through, uh, what I did is just went out to the, I think it was Home Depot or somewhere like that, and just bought like a, a shower drain. And that actually fits that opening perfectly. And so that way the coal, the coal won't fall straight through. And then the only thing that really falls through is the ash. So it won't clog up the, the forge as quickly. All right, so the next item we're going to need in blacksmithing is obviously the metal. And there are different places you can go to that supply metal for blacksmiths. But instead of spending a lot of money right away, you can go to places like flea markets and antique stores and pick up some old tools fairly cheaply. And the beauty of doing that is that you can get them inexpensively, but the quality of the metal is still going to be there. That way you can afford to make mistakes and mess up without losing money in the process. The last part of the trinity of blacksmithing, so to speak, is our anvil. And you don't really need an anvil like this to start out with. I was very fortunate enough to acquire this anvil from someone in my family. It was my great-grandfather's anvil and he was a farmer so I imagine he had to repair a lot of different things and maybe even make some of his tools that he needed. Um, so, like I said, I was very fortunate enough to have this, but if I hadn't had someone in my family who owned an anvil, I wouldn't have an anvil right now, more than likely, um, because they're very rare to come by. Um, you can get them off the internet, but they're going to be very expensive, especially one of this particular size. I think this is about somewhere around 100 pounds, no more than that, um, maybe 85, 95, something like that. But you really don't need an anvil like this to start out with. A lot of guys will start out just using a railroad tie or some type of piece of scrap metal you get at the junkyard. And something, you know, anything like that will serve you just as well as an anvil. So it doesn't take a whole lot of money unless you just have the money and want to put it in into that. It doesn't take a lot to start out, uh, you know, with blacksmithing. All right, guys, so now that we've talked about all of the three main things that you're going to need to start blacksmithing, there are still a few basic tools that you're going to, to need as well. First of all, you're going to need a good hammer of some type. This is an actual blacksmithing hammer. Um, I got it from a hardware store for about 20 or 25 dollars. So although there are expensive blacksmith hammers out there, you can still find uh, pretty inexpensive blacksmith hammers, but if you're having trouble finding one like that, uh, you can always use a uh, sledgehammer as well, and that'll work just fine. Another thing that is good to have is a good pair of work gloves, just so that you don't burn your hands. Some safety glasses are a pretty good thing to have, because the last thing you want is a piece of hot metal coming into your eye. Um, these, you don't necessarily need these right, right away, but I've got a couple different pairs of pliers, and these are good for, especially the needle nose pliers, they're good for manipulating the, the metal for finer um, detailed work, like if you're trying to, to make a small little loop or curl in the metal 
you can use those and affect that really well. Um, another thing that's really unnecessary that you don't really need, but it's good to have, is a wire brush. And this is good to have because in the forging process, you end up with scales on your anvil and also on your project. So you can use that to sweep away those scale, the scaling material. Um, and then another thing to have that's pretty essential, but you don't necessarily have to have it right away, is a good pair of blacksmith tongs. These are wolf jaw tongs made by Centaur Forge. <laughs> what are you doing? Get back. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. They're blacksmith tongs made by Centaur Forge, and they are they're wolf jaw tongs because the the mouth sort of resembles a wolf or a dog. They can hold round stock as well as square stock, so it's pretty versatile. Um, these particular this particular set cost about forty dollars after shipping and tax. Um, so it might cost a little more money than you want to spend right away. But they're really a good thing to invest in because if you try to use anything else, you'll you'll quickly find that it really a to blacksmith tongs are the only thing that's going to hold you know your material the best. Because I was trying to use just some pliers um, the other day, and every time I would come down with the hammer, it, the project the material wanted to slip out of the pliers, and it was a disaster. Um, so you know I would greatly encourage you to uh, just invest in these um, because you know you buy once you cry once you know so it's it's good to just go ahead and spend the money because it's going to serve you well in the long run so other than that really all I have here is a bucket of water for for quenching the hot material um, and then I've got a bag here of 50 pound bag of coal I also got from Centaur Forge that was about fifty dollars but again that's something that you're really gonna want um, in fact for a coal forge you need it so um, I would go ahead and, and go ahead and say spend the money on that as well um, so all of this around me here for the most part is fairly inexpensive things I was able to get uh, most for the most part somewhat free um, some of it was given to me some of it I just uh, acquired going to the scrapyard and and really excuse me you can piece together a really nice forge uh, fairly inexpensively there again there may be some items that you may have to spend a little more money for but you shouldn't have to spend a lot of money to get away with a really good forge to start blacksmithing uh, this is also this particular setup is um, packable I've got a hand truck behind me back here uh, where I can pack out the uh, the anvil itself. Um, I can. I've got a uh, toolbox here that I put all my other small tools in. So that's about two trips. And then the the actual forage itself is uh, the grill is on wheels, so I can just push that to wherever I'm going to transport it. Um, so you know that's another good added thing to it. If you if you can make your forage portable, if you're going to you know travel and things like that so anyway uh, I thank you guys for watching um, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I uh, hope you guys will have learned something maybe get out and start blacksmithing for yourself I think it's really fun again something that's really good for us to learn and useful for us so that we can add to our uh, learning in experimental archaeology and help us become more self-reliant so anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'm Brad Wilson with Wild at Heart Wilderness. And until the next one, get out in the woods and be wild. Thanks guys.